All right, we are looking at Robotech for this video, the SDF-1, uh, mid-80s, I would race home from school so I could watch Robotech, the, uh, the Harmony Gold series, well, I, I think, from what I remember reading, I think they took three different anime series and put it all together and called it Robotech. Uh, but the, uh, the Macross Saga, that was always my favorite out of all three. Uh, the SDF-1, the huge starship that crashed into Earth that could also transform as well. Uh, let's see, I think I've got a picture of the... That's what it turned into right there in attack mode. This is the... Sorry about the glare there. Fortress mode, spaceship mode. Pretty straightforward kit. Uh, this was this came out in the uh, the mid '80s as well. Uh, got this off of eBay. I had the kit years ago. Uh, looks like this one was sitting in somebody's basement. His staples all they rusted out. Uh, four trees. One small decal sheet. Hopefully these things will still work. If not, I can just recreate these lines by uh, with you by using some masking tape. Uh, comes with a stand that, uh, from what I what it looks like, I think. Let's see. That plugs into there, and I think this piece right here caps it, so you can turn it back and forth. Uh, Oddly enough, there's there's a there's a place here where you could put a like a placard that would say either Robotech or Macross, but you don't get that in the kit. So I might be able to recreate that with some uh, by making my own decal. Uh, I had thought about lighting this. I think I would have more of a uh, more of an issue on my hands if I tried to do it though. These are the where the engines are, where you'd see the uh, the light from the engine exhaust. Uh, I'd have to completely cut out these bottom sections here, cut out all these. I don't think I want to do all that work on this. I just want to get the kit put together and paint it up nicely. Uh, there are a lot of turrets which are right there. These each have where are they at there? Those are the engine bells for the for them to fit in right there. These right here, these go on the other side that keep it in place on the model so you can turn them. I'm not doing that. I'm just going to have them all pointing forward, glue them in place. I'm not worried about it moving around. I just, uh, I really enjoyed this kit when I was younger, and I want to hopefully do it some justice now that I know a little bit more on uh, how to build these things and uh, paint them up nicer. So I'm going to go ahead. I already washed uh, the trees. I'm going to go ahead and Look at the instructions, start cutting pieces off the trees, and start working on some sub-assemblies. Uh, sub so, we'll be right back with that. Looks like we're working on the, uh, the arms first. Alright, be right back. Alright, so work progresses on the SDF-1. I've got the Daedalus and the Prometheus taken care of here. Um, this little piece here, yeah, that was a... That was a nice little challenge keeping that in place. Uh, if the noise in the background is too much, I'll uh, go ahead and just do it. Do this as a voiceover. The um, the main hull looking good so far. All the cannons are permanently glued in place. I didn't want those wibbling around. Uh, I've got these 
braces here for the sponsons. Those will just fit in place there. I mean, so far, a very easy kit to uh, to assemble. This, so this one is going to be all all in the painting. Uh, it's, I still have about so much more left for the. Actually, I, I gotta grab that here. This one came off the tree by itself. Yeah, so it's gonna be a nice size kit. I still have the the back engines here. But, you know, like I said, this one's going to be uh, pretty much all in the painting. Because, uh, yeah, very easy to assemble. There's been no little, like, gotchas or areas where I was just like, well, I should have done that a little bit more carefully. Uh, but, yeah, so far so good. I'm really happy with uh, the assembly so far. And, yeah, I'm just going to keep on going with this. Uh, you know, like I said, noise in the background. I got the heater going and I've got my clothes dryer going so if for some reason it is too loud I will just go ahead and redo this in a voiceover but it should be okay I've done this before okay I'm gonna uh, keep moving along with this and uh, show you some updates here real soon Alright, work is progressing nicely on the SDF-1. Uh, these are just some just some dry fits. Uh, I have some seams that I'm sanding down after I filled them in. The, uh, the back thrusters here, these are the these are the biggest culprits here. I've got plenty of putty on both sides here. I'm using this Tamiya putty. Not sure if I'm a fan of it or not. Um, apart from that, everything's looking pretty good. The back section here, once that's all sanded down, and I'll put some primer on it. See, uh, see how that gap is doing. Uh, the actual stand goes in here, so I'll sit just like so. But, uh, yep, still working on it, and I'm probably going to get the small cannons in next, um, just following the diagrams. Uh, so far, so good. These uh, the thrusters here, I did notice that when I do get these glued in place, I'm going to have to... Uh, Keep an eye on the placement because the one seems to uh, naturally droop a little bit. The ooh, where is that there? These bottom parts here, I might actually just uh, I might leave these off until after painting because uh, these. Small sections here, there's larger ones that go on each side. So I'll make sure those get painted up nicely before I go ahead and cap them off because some of it will be obscured, but it'll be easier to paint them before the before assembly. But yep, she's coming along and uh Should have uh, some of these seams. Uh, I'm not going to worry about too much because there's a couple parts where the seam actually is the cutoff point for the colors. One like for uh, the white and the, and the dark blue. But I'll take a look at that. Uh, I might 
might pull out the milliput instead. It's uh, all, day, all gonna depend on how well the uh, tomato putty works. And there's a lot on there, but I had to build up a nice ridge to, to work on sanding down. So, all right, I'm gonna get back to it. All right, we are coming along nicely on the SDF-1. Uh, thrusters are almost done. The shoulder sponsons taken care of here. Got all the little guns and turrets and fun pieces on here. As much fun as you can have with some of these small pieces. Uh, yeah, these some of these were weren't the easiest to stay on. It's uh, I don't know. I, I use this uh, plastruck bonding, but sometimes you have to just rely on the uh, the old faithful orange tube. Uh, but yeah, this is going to be ready for priming here very very soon. Uh, working on there's the command deck there. Just have a couple small pieces to glue to that. So I'm using this tray here because um, the color of the plastic is, let's see if I can get a good shot there, same color as my uh, piece of carpet that I have underneath my workbench here. Yeah, so it took 25 minutes to find uh, a piece that fell off, fell off of here. But uh, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and get a few other pieces sanded here. And then uh, let's see, I have another piece of the command deck to assemble. I'm going to probably, let's see, these, these cannons here on the shoulder, these are, they move freely. But what I'm thinking about doing is... Once this, once this uh, actually goes into the hull, uh, let's see, I'll put it on. Once it goes on there, whenever this moves, these move, they, they tend to, uh, at least one of them moves with it. I think I'm just going to get a decent spot and then cement those in place. So regardless of moving it around, they'll stay in the same area. But yeah, I'll get this done uh, probably in the next, uh, oh, there's a, see, that right there is why I switched to the orange tube because that's about ready to fall out of there. Let's go ahead and take that out right now. Yep, this should only be, take another few days, because all I have to really do now is just uh, finish up the command deck. Um, I'm still planning on doing the uh, thrusters after, because I still have pieces I have to glue into, let's see, basically these pieces here. They have corresponding ones that go, that get glued onto the sides. I want to get those painted up before I actually put the thrusters on because once I get the thrusters on there, it's not going to be the easiest thing in the world to try and get all that, get the detail painted on the inside of there. So I'll do those separately. Uh, the thrusters, I'll probably do, uh, I'll try to do like an airbrush effect with uh, getting a, getting a uh, color in uh, each of the spots here, if I can talk, and then uh, hitting it with some with a, a soft white line on each one to make it look like it's actually th like pulsating. But yep, got these that go on the the thrusters here, and the, there's like four per side. This is this piece here is part of the command module, and. 
these I have to be very careful with because I remember from years ago they will snap easily so I'm probably gonna cut them off and just do them separate like be as careful as I can trying to do them separately but uh, yeah we're we're almost there all the construction is almost complete and then uh, I'm gonna prime this with um, oh I think I'm gonna go with the uh, Vallejo surface primer the gray once that's on there I'll go ahead and uh, hit it with a matte coat and then tape off mask off a few areas the white I'm actually thinking I might just use my Liquitex ink for the for the white and then I've got a dark blue here from Vallejo this is uh, in the dark Prussian blue it's darker in uh, in real life here the, uh, the camera actually makes it look way lighter but yeah, it's it's darker than what you see there uh, but yep Coming along and uh, should be done with this in the next few days. Well, a few days of working on it. I still got a full schedule coming up here. So, uh, I was just watching Invasion of the Saucer Men and I was just thinking to myself, I've got a few saucer kits. I should do a saucer spectacular. Earth versus the Flying Saucers, the saucer from Plan 9. Actually, I have two of those because taken from an old flying saucer kit and uh, got a Doctor Who Cyberman saucer so so more projects to work on but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, keep working on this bad boy um, the stand it's not too bad once the once the thrusters get put in the weights distributed a little bit more with the center of gravity and uh, yeah, it holds it up pretty nicely. So we'll see how it looks. All right, I will get back to it then. All right, so I started uh, priming. I'm just using the Vallejo surface primer. Uh, I've got a good amount done right now. I'm gonna give it probably about 12 hours to uh, completely dry. I gotta go to bed anyway, so I'll put a little bit more on before I get ready for work tomorrow. And then we should be able to uh, start painting this by uh, yeah, a couple days for me and uh, a few scenes for you.
All right, so I've got most of the SDF-1 primed and ready to go. Uh, the biggest thing with uh, with the prime coat, like I said in the past, it'll show you any kind of crimes. So I went ahead and uh, sanded down some of this uh, Tamiya putty, which I'm not a big fan of. I don't think I'm going to use it anymore. Uh, no offense. But uh, mixed up some Milliput. I'm getting these seams on the main engines here. This one pretty close there. The nice thing with a ship this size and at this scale with the fact that I'm not going to be doing any kind of lights, I am going to be doing uh, not necessarily an Aztec pattern, but I'll be doing some different rectangles of, uh, of colors. That will also help to hide a lot of the seam lines. And like I said in a previous segment, like one, one side's going to be blue, one side's going to be white. So a lot of that gets hidden as well. Just have to finish up. There's a couple of antenna that go up on top of the command modules here. I'm not in any light at all here. There we go. It's a little bit better. I we'll still have to get these cannons cleaned up and glued into place. Then I'm going to go ahead and give this another coat of uh, Vallejo Surface Primer. Uh, probably start working on the uh, Daedalus and the Prometheus next. I'll start the uh, the bottoms here. I'll get some uh, Vallejo Hull Red on there. And then just do some accents of probably uh, Blood Red. And I'll use the panel line accenter to uh, get those details taken care of. Alright, so I'm going to let this dry here. I do have one of these little fins here that came off when I was sanding that bugger right there. Thankfully, since I have this little tray here, I was able to just drop it down there and I can glue that on afterwards. So, Okay, I'm going to keep on moving with this then. All right, so I have a coat of titanium white ink on here uh, for, for all your white parts. I do plan on putting a second coat on there, and I also have started masking off the engine section. All those little veins on there that uh, were a pain in the butt to put on. Yep. I just had to snap them off so I could go ahead and put a mask on there. So I will go ahead and glue those back on after everything's painted. Uh, seams aren't as good as I wanted to, wanted them to uh, to be when after they came out. Uh, but like I said, I'm just going to do. I'll do some painting. I'll just uh, put some rectangles in there and do different colors of blue, just to kind of break it up a little bit. But uh, that's where we are right now, and I'm gonna tape off this next section and get a coat of blue on here.
Okay, not bad. Just got a little bit of touch-up work and I'll be happy. Nope, there goes the compressor. Alright, so I still have to, uh, once this is completely dried, I'll go ahead and uh, put a matte coat over it and then I will tape off the sections, these sections here and go ahead and hit this with the uh, the titanium white. But overall I'm pretty happy about that. I wish I would have thought about these originally before I had to break them off and now I have to glue them back on after afterwards. But this is a good base. Uh, like I said, I'm not too happy with the seam lines the way they came out. Uh, I'll put that on the inside because this one looks a little, eh. I don't know. Maybe I'll put this one on the outside and just put some Aztec or uh, create my own panels on, on there. But we're getting there. All right, so here are some. Uh, it's, it's blue and green. Uh, one of the things I hate doing is masking because uh, I'm always afraid it's going to turn out bad. But I, mean, I could always go in and clean it up. I mean, it's it's only paint. Uh, but yeah, I've got got this masked off. Uh, my little test here with the uh, the panels. I just have to add a little bit more color to the paint, and some of these were just uh, some darker wash or darker washes added in with the base color. I have to go with whites and blacks. Um, a little bit of white, like maybe go ten drops of blue, one drop of white, or ten uh, ten drops of blue, one one drop of black, and then do it here and there. Uh, also, want to go a little bit smaller on these. Right now, I'm just, uh, let's see if I can find it. I was just playing around, making my own mask here. But I think I might try to do it with, uh, with some cardstock. And then just, uh, even if I just do a line here, a line here, a line here, a line here. So we'll see what happens with that. But I'm going to go ahead and uh, redo the blue. Making a rhyme there. Uh, redo the blue uh, I have to here's here's the difference between using an airbrush and using a paintbrush now granted this is only one coat of paint with a brush but that's what you get with an airbrush that, or even a spray can and that's what you get with a uh, paintbrush so obviously this is gonna get masked off and once I hit this with one coat of blue with the airbrush that's all those brush marks are gonna go away then I can start looking at masking off the rest of this bad boy here. And then, let's see. Yeah, the masking tape will go here because the bottom is white, the top is blue. So this will all be blue here. Uh, for the most part, most of this is going to be blue. This whole hull section here is white. Uh, the details in here, these are all going to be white. And I'm going to try a homemade panel line wash using uh, lighter fluid and white enamel paint. So I do have, uh, I've got the Tamiya black panel line wash, but uh, there's a technique I've seen more than once where you mix those two, two ingredients, your enamel paint and your lighter fluid and you get the same result so so now begins the tedious job uh, like I said it's nothing like masking um, but tedious job of masking all this off and then uh, yeah get get back into it the uh, yeah, I had, had a little bit of bleed with this but it's not like this was the final color anyway uh, so, so I put the hull red on here, some gray, some details, and then do the same with uh, with the next, the other arm. So, all right, time to pull out the scissors and the. I got my frog tape here, and just get back to work. 
All right, masking continues, and I'm starting to hate this model. <laughs> no, it's just, it's, it's a lot going on with the blue and the white. Uh, I decided to use some mask all. I'm going to try this because I hate taping. Uh, so I just got to have to get in there real close with the airbrush. And uh, yeah, if I have to, to clean some things off afterwards, I'll do it, no, including my thumbnail there. Uh, but yep, I'm going to wait till this dries. Get some blue on here and see what it looks like. All right, so she's not that pretty right now, but I mean, there's going to be some touch-up work. I knew that was going to happen going in. Uh, mask all pretty well worked. Um, yeah, it's like I said, there's going to be some touch-ups, but I have to just take off the last of this tape here. The white that I used was uh, was that white ink, and I knew going in. Let me see if I can find my scissors here. <clears throat> I knew going in that that wasn't going to be the final white, so I'm going to go over this probably with uh, some some Citadel Corex white. Hmm, get up. Hobby knife right next to me. But yeah, I'll go in and uh, clean up the areas of the uh, blue that are uh -huh, starting to rub off. Uh, I'll get a matte coat on here first and I'll start cleaning that up. Get the white on here. And then start doing a little bit of weathering. Uh, let's see, in the meantime, I got some hull red on the bottoms of the Daedalus and the Prometheus. That's just the first coat. I'll get some uh, so either scarlet red or blood red in between the panels on the undersides there. I get some panel line accents on there as well. So I don't hate this model. I hate doing all this masking, especially. Ooh, that looks pretty. This part here will be painted black. I'm probably giving a uh, either black or very dark brown and giving a black wash. But yeah, that looks nice. So I'm gonna I got a couple couple things I have to uh, let's see. Yeah, obviously I gotta redo all this with the Corax white. Uh, clean up some of these turrets. Clean up some areas down underneath here. These are getting painted black. But yeah, I think the first thing I'm gonna do is get this, they could give this guy a, ooh, give it a matte coat. So I don't rub anything else off. And then, uh, yeah, start working on uh, touch-ups. So, yeah, I am, oh, I also gave, Thrusters, another, another go. And I have to take the tape off of these and get those matte coated. But yep. Ooh, if it could just stay that pretty. Okay, I'll be right back. Okay, second coat of Hall Red is on the uh, the bottom of the Daedalus and the Prometheus. Oops, it missed a spot right there. Uh, on the bottom of the Daedalus and the Prometheus. And let me get a paintbrush there. And okay, second coat of Hall Red is on the bottoms of the Daedalus and the Prometheus. Uh, once that completely dries 
I'm going to go ahead and uh, have to pick a color red. I don't know if it's going to be uh, Citadel color or Mephiston red or uh, one of the Vallejo, either bloody red or scarlet red. I'm going to do some dry brushing on the inside just to lighten that up before I put my panel line accents in there. I uh, also have to do the base colors of the top and sides on both. And then uh, go ahead and get some, oops, get in frame. Uh, go ahead and put some panel line accents on there too. All right, and I did a little bit of cleanup this morning. Stuff to do a little bit more. Um, I am awaiting my can of flat spray um, to uh, get up to room temperature. It's cold outside, so I just want to make sure that it's at a good temperature where I can spray it really quickly and get it, get the model back in the house. Uh, where's it at? This one right here. Actually, I, I looked over and there was a huge bend in it. I'm not sure how that happened, but of course, a piece like this, you bend it back into shape, and what does it do? It starts to snap. So. I've got some uh, super glue gel and some accelerator on there to keep it in place. I was thinking about using some baking soda just to put a little bit of girth in there, a little bit of actual substance, but I think that's going to work out as long as I don't play with it. Uh, so yeah, that's going to be next. and. Yeah. There's a little bit of uh, variations in the blue from, from the airbrushing, but I still have to put a, uh, a blue wash over this. I'm not sure if it'll be the blue tone from Army Painter or the Drakenhof Nightshade from Citadel. I'll try both of them. But honestly, I'm not minding it because, like I said, on a ship this scale, this is a uh, 1 5,000th scale ship. Uh, you're not going to see a whole lot of really really small detail you can't really get panel lines in there without making them look goofy I tried it on the on the thrusters it looked goofy uh, so I just painted over it and uh, that's why I really wouldn't want, even want to try trying like trying to light this thing because lights at any scale even if they're just small uh, fiber optics they would not look in scale so I'm just going to go with uh, some slight variations. Uh, I might go ahead and put uh, just like a piece of card uh, at, at like another corner, hitting it with the airbrush with a lighter shade or a darker shade just to get a little bit of variations, but I'm not going to go crazy on it. Uh, at this point in time, I just want to get the model done. Uh, it's proven to be problematic at best on some areas uh, still have to still want to do a little bit of light weathering and at this scale it has to be light weathering there's no way I'm going to do like like uh, scrapes and because if there if you had a big scratch on here imagine how big that uh, whatever caused the scratch would be you'd have to hit like a huge asteroid or something but um, I might do some very, 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 very light chipping, uh, just using a sponge in different areas. I probably won't, won't even be able to see it unless I really zoom in on it, but I don't know. Anything's possible. So, all right, I'm going to get back to it, and I actually have to stop at my hobby store and get some white enamel. The panel lines on top of here, uh, they're actually... They're actually in white, not black, so I just have to get some white enamel. Um, I've got my lighter fluid. I might even film a quick little tutorial on how to make your own panel line wash after I just gave it away. Um, and, uh, yeah, we'll see where it takes, takes us from there. All right, so I'm going to get back to it. All right, I just want to uh, jump back here with a quick little update. Uh, I'm just doing some dry brushing on the holes here. I want to get a little bit more paint off of that brush there. I 
and just add a little bit more color. And I'm still going to do a panel line wash on here. That hull red is pretty brown as it is, so I just wanted to get a little, a little bit more color in there. There we go, that's looking better. I'm using a soft bristle brush for dry brushing. I'm not using a traditional hard brush. And dry brushing has come a long way in the past few years. There's a fantastic site called Artist Opus where pretty much everything is either stippled or dry brushed. Get in focus. Just adding a little bit of variation to it. And then that should actually come through pretty nicely when I put the panel line wash on there. Okay, that looks a lot better. Okay, so the panel line wash is on there. I just have to wait for it to dry, then I'll take a Q-tip with a little bit of uh, white spirits on it and clean off the clean off the little pooling there. It's pretty much you're gonna you're gonna get that when you use this product. Um, trying to see if there's let's see I got I could do this. There you go. See that immediately just sucks into that line there. Let me get this on the other side there. I'm doing this from watching the monitor on the my camcorder. But yeah once it uh, once it dries I'll just clean that up and I've got that one there and this one's already done. So yeah, I just have to clean up the uh, that shadowing and pooling there. But and there goes my phone. But yep, yeah, we're getting there. All right, work is progressing, and I decided that uh, because of the scale of this model being a one five thousand scale model. Uh, me trying to do any kind of panel lines uh, would just make it look ridiculous. So I opted for using the sponge technique and I'm really liking that. I've got uh, this is uh, Cantor Blue from Citadel Color. I also have, let's see which one is it? Okay, John, where did you put your stuff at? Uh, night blue. Game color night blue. In addition to... Uh, let's see. Uh, I got a couple different different colors. colors so. um, yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, keep sponging. I've got a little bit of paint on a so just dabbing on my stuff just to check it there. And most of this you can't really see until you get it in a certain light, but then I think that's when the uh, well, I feel that's when the effect actually takes hold you. Yeah. So it's not that smooth surface. And yes, I know I did a crappy job on the seam line on there. This is not going to be any kind of an award winner. This is me just making a favorite ship from my childhood.
There we go. So creating texture by using different techniques. Alright, we'll get back to it. Okay, moving right along, I got some uh, panel lines accented here. Uh, just using the uh, Tamiya panel line accent. And let's get a few of these done. Basically, all you gotta do is just tap the brush where you want it, and then a little bit of cleanup later using some white spirits. Uh, it looks a little messy right now, but after it gets cleaned up, all you're gonna see are those lines. I'm actually gonna be doing the, uh, I'll make my own white panel line accent for the top of this, and I've got. So I'm done here on the control deck. Oop, a little sloppy there, but I'll clean that up afterwards. Then I still have to go in here and do uh, a little bit of cleanup, and then I'll do some uh, some very light weathering. Um, the white, I'll probably just go just keep it in frame, John. Uh, I'll probably just go through and do a very light wash and get some additional little bit of, like a little bit of a sepia tone but not enough to make it to where it's going to make it look completely brown so I want to give it a a little bit of an aged look to it. And I'm just going to do a little bit of stippling with some different shades of uh, very light grays here on the, well, at least on the white portion. Uh, the blue. I'm going to keep going with the um, keep going with the stippling with the different colors of blue there. As I said, the uh, if I were to try to do panel lines like I originally planned, it would look so out of place because of the scale of this. But I think I'm going to go ahead and. Uh, Call it a day for this portion of the uh, the build, so I can get, at least get part one up, uh, and then be back with uh, part two as soon as I can. Get this model in the books and get on to the uh, the next project. So, all right. So until next time, uh, I will keep some uh, some pictures going up on the Instagram page. Uh, you can find that at uh, john.takis.1138. I'll put that in the uh, description link, or the link in the description. Um, and also on my, uh, on the uh, private Facebook, uh, Facebook group, um, Out of This World Models and Minis, previously John's Models and Minis. So until next time, until part two, I'm going to keep on working on this. And then hopefully have updates for you very soon.